Okay, so it's border time. I've got my four here little um, samples that I made. So I'm gonna do the pot holders with. I got all kinds of my, um, what's this called? Cotton stash out here. Uh, I didn't have any more of the black in Katona, so I found something here. Onion, it's like orga it's wool and cotton, and it's the same weight, and I think it'll just be a nice frame up. So I really wanted black for the border for these two. So I'm gonna do a simple border, a striped border here to show you. Today is the simple border. Okay, hey, oh, let's go. <laughs> So before we start, I just wanted to show you what we're going to make here today. This is here now finished with a double border. Double border is basically just doing a border from the back and from the front and then joining them to hide our all ends here inside, which we usually have in mosaic crochet when we're working flat like this, yeah? And ta-da! All gone. I did a little hoop here on mine as well. I still have to block it, but it's really nice. So, uh, very happy with it. Mm -mm. Uh, so I know you're all waiting for the polka dot border or a few of you have been asking me and so that will come later this week but just want to show you that this here the simple border that I show you today is also the way that you work the back side of the polka the big polka dot border so here I did one two three four five double crochet rounds and then one half double crochet round from the back so if you are anxious to start that you can always also follow this along and this is how you do the foundation round which is done here as well and then from the you could do the back side before i i come next up well next up is the striped one and then there's the polka dot one <laughs> so yeah that's what we're gonna do today hey oh let's go let's frame that that piece up it's always so nice once you frame it up jesus okay off we go so this here hmm, i spilled coffee on me great <laughs> this here is actually made from the charts that are coming up next week which are the happy go lucky variations of my happy pattern uh, but i mean they're basically just the same it's just skipping one stitch here one row here of of single crochets in the middle of the in the middle of the in the beginning of next pattern repeat yeah because you're always just doing it with two colors here yeah i really like this so but that's not what we're going to do here today we're going to do the border and you can just imagine that this is a blanket or what it doesn't really matter which size it is it's always the same so i'm just going to show you on this one here and we start by making the foundation row round sorry and the foundation round is worked all around our piece it's a chain it's a slip stitch uh, round and i am going to show you how to do it and it's good to have some contrasting color here i'm actually using a color that i didn't use here it's very similar to this one but a bit lighter um yeah i used katona cotton for these and a three millimeter hook and for this first row round of the border we're going to continue with our three millimeter hook and start with the slip stitching so when we start here on, I'm going to start here on the, the foundation round and I'm actually going to go into, and it's a bit difficult to see in the black, sorry, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go into each and every stitch here, not into the chain, but into the stitch here. So I'm sort of going to hide this so it would be equal on both sides. And you're just going to pull your yarn up like so, and then you go into the next stitch and your yarn tail here is on always the other side of the fabric when you're doing chain stitches, uh, slip stitches. I'm so sorry. In Icelandic, it's... It's confusing. So we're just gonna pull the yarn up and through like so. And always give it just a little bit of a ease because we don't want these to be too tight actually. Now this one was a bit big. I'm just gonna fix that. Just tuck at it here. And we're just gonna go around like so, uh, making one slip stitch into every stitch. I'm gonna show you on all sides because I'm here with you, crocheting along and showing you. Okay, so now I'm getting here to the border, no, to the, the corner. And <clears throat> I'm gonna go into the next stitch here. And then I'm gonna go here in these here, the border stitches. I'm gonna always go in 
to really see where this first uh, single crochet here board stitch was worked. I'm gonna go into that one. And now when we're working up the sides, we have all the tails here. Usually I would maybe trim them a bit before starting this, but, but I couldn't for the life of me find my good scissors. So we're gonna do that later. You can do that now. It's okay to do it later. It doesn't really matter, but they're kind of in your way. So you just have to find a way to put your hand under it like so, and sort of keep them in place while you're working because your thread is here on the back side, yeah? And now I'm gonna go into the next stitch. And that is, you see, I was into the, I, I worked one chain, slip stitch into the stitch here where the yellow was worked into and now i'm going to go into where the black was worked into and just always the same go down pull your yarn up and go straight through this is the smallest stitch it's like up and just straight through and i was just give it a little bit of a just take care that you're not doing it too tightly because then your work will um, hmm, how do you say this i always struggle with this word in english it will Ripple? No, the opposite of rippling, like being crumpled, like like this together. Hmm. Please leave it in comments if you know what I mean and <laughs> you told me, sorry. And so it's just one stitch like this all the way up, always into each and every stitch here. Okay, I'm going to go up and show you here on the next corner. Okay, so I've worked all the way up the border here, as you see, just one stitch into each and every stitch. So you should have the same stitch count as your number of rows. And this is not really the place to fudge the stitch count. Okay, must remember before next tape to <laughs> wash my hand. <laughs> uh, so we just want to make one in each and every one. And later on, we can fudge the stitch count if we need. Okay, so here I am at the last one here. You see, this is where the last border stitch here, the black one was worked. I'm gonna do one there, whoops. And I know it's a bit difficult to see in the black, sorry about that. But it was just too fancy to do it in black. I mean, it's lovely. <laughs> okay, last stitch here. And now I'm gonna start working into the last row here. And you could just go into the back loop, but I usually go into the front loop here, actually, both loops. Uh, and that way I get, so just straight from the last one to the first single crochet here. Basically where this single crochet was worked was the last chain slip stitch here on the border. And then into this, the same, the same first stitch here, we're gonna go into both loops like so. And if we do it like this, and now we're just into each stitch. This is really the, the nicest uh, side of them all here because it's just normal stitches that we're working into. And we're gonna go under both loops because that way we get the same effect as we get here and that's why i i go in these here i don't go into the 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 chain here i go into you see this one um yeah so here we just continue one slip stitch into each and every uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, stitch and on we go I'll catch up with you on the next corner Okay, I've done my slip stitches all the way over here, and I have two stitches left here. And I'll just work into them normally into both loops. Oops. Slip stitch in my way around here, and this is the foundation round. Okay, and now we're going to go down this side here. And it's the same as on the other sides, really. We're just going to work into each and every stitch and sort of into where our stitches are worked. So that's it's nice to work into them. So this last stitch here, border stitch, is worked into this one here. So I'm going to work it into the same stitch that the border stitches were worked into. So I'm always going like that was black and now it's brown. And just one into each and every. It's really, it should lead you on rather nicely, I think, if you just, well, for me, it's like, it's, um, it couldn't be any other way. <laughs> okay, so just one like this into each stitch until we get to the next corner. Okay, see, I've worked all the way down here. So I'm not working into the stitches, the pattern itself, just into the border stitches, see? And now I'm here at the end. I have one more border stitch here on this side. And now we're almost there. Let us see. Here's one. 
and then I start working into these here again. No, it should be higher up here. Here, yeah. Because we kind of want to hide the first. The first uh, the foundation, so where we where we chained up, so that it is symmetrical. Talking about symmetrical, these patterns are a lot of fun to play with. These little triangles. And I see many patterns coming in the future that are based on this little fun, little happy pattern that we are working on together. It's always the point like where I'm like, okay, it's like 15 more stitches have been going on. Like, should I, it, is it another take or should I just, can I ramble a bit more? <laughs> uh, I'm going to power through. Say something positive then. Have you done your affirmations today, self-affirmation? I look at myself in the mirror and I go, you're doing great. It's a good job. Flot, flot. <laughs> it's good. You should try it. Compliment yourself like you would a friend, yeah? <laughs> okay. So, one stitch left here. And then the last one we're going to do with the invisible join. Oh, I don't have my scissors. Jesus. Yes. Oh, I must have extra hidden in my, in my needle case. Okay, so we cut here when there's really one stitch left to go and we're gonna pull the yarn right up like so. And we are going to use a darning needle to sew in the last stitch using the invisible join method which is really an absolute brilliant thing okay so tuck a bit of it here at the end at, at the other side the first stitch that you made so that it's in in order with the other ones and then you take sort of the <coughs> <coughs> sorry my cold is almost over but it's still a bit um pretty sure i'm not gonna I'm supposed to call this the ass of the needle but the back side <laughs> uh, so that we don't split the yarn and we're gonna put our needle here under these two stitches here both loops here of the first stitch we made and pull it through and just do this nice and easy and don't tuck it in too much because we want to do it so that it seems like this last stitch has the same gauge as the other ones right and then once you see this is the tuck it nicely a bit here and then we just go straight down here you see where our um, uh, yarn is coming up here go into here on the, on the side and voila just looks like the other ones ah, la, 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 la. and here i will just take these here too and tie a knot and then these and these tails will go into the bo double border so I'm not, i don't have to weave them in okay and there we go. That was the foundation round. All done. And like I said, it is important to use a different color or some color that is a bit, um, uh, sorry, saltante, how do you say, um, um, that sort of pops. Because we are now in the next round going to work into the back loops here. And it's really good to, to be able to see them like this, yeah. Okay, foundation run, round done. Yeah. On we go. Um, to the back side of the border um, and that is really the same for the front and the back and the simple border um, so now we're going to go down the hook side so I was using a three millimeter hook and I'm going to go down to 2.5 so just go ha half a hook size down if you're using four use 3.5 5 4.5 etc now before we start with the back side you should just check and see sometimes these ends here um, 
go astray and go inside. So we have not done that here. So I'm just gonna get them like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do here on the first side of the back side of the border, <laughs> this is um, a love-hate relationship that people have with this round. I actually quite enjoy it, but then again, I'm a bit weird maybe. So <laughs> we're gonna work uh, double crochets into the back loops here of our, our uh, slip stitches. And so uh, there's uh, no time like the present. So we'll just start. And what is a bit difficult with this is that they are not so nice to get into, right? So you kind of have to, sometimes it's a bit difficult to get into them. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna use, yeah, I'll do the back border black, right? And like I said in the intro, I'm using a slightly different yarn here for the border because I finished my black in Katona, but that's fine. Um, so we're gonna just gonna use, we're gonna do double crochets, and we just put our hook here under the first. It starts anywhere. I just want to start here close to the corner to show you how to do the corner, and we're gonna pull our yarn up like so, and then do two chains, one and two, and we're gonna put our tail here and work around it, and we're gonna yarn over and just go into each stitch. And work a double crochet there. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to get into the stitches, and then I like to back into them like this, yeah? But I mean, if you do it right and don't do your chains too loose or anything, I don't know, I kind of like it. I'm just working over the tail here a bit, and then it doesn't really matter, I'll just go into the double border along with all the ends. Okay, set that free here. And now we're getting to the corner, you see? And there are two stitches here before. So I'm just gonna work normal double crochets here into the first one. And then I'm gonna do two double crochets into the last stitch of this side. One and two. Oop. La 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 la. So, chain two, and then we continue on the other side, and we do the same here for the first stitch after the corner. I'm gonna work two double crochets into that. So it's really just a basic corner stitch you would always do, it's just working here in the corner. And in the first, this last stitch of this side, we did two double crochets, then two chains, and then two double crochets into the first one here. And now we're just gonna do one double crochet into each stitch up until the next corner and then we repeat and do the same as on the first corner it's really easy so the only thing is just you know persevere <laughs> it's easy but it can't be a bit like and it must be really frustrating looking at me going through the loops with such ease um uh, but it, I mean, it, it can be a bit difficult to get into them, the, the, the loops, but I think it's, I mean, it's going great here. It's like when I u watch YouTube videos for something like bake, baking gingerbread houses and <laughs> it looks so easy when they're doing that. And I'm just there with frosting all over and four walls that don't stick together. But anyways, I hope uh, your gingerbread round will go well. It's just one double crochet to eat and then do the corner like I showed you here. Uh, and just power through and, you know, remain positive. <laughs> okay, so I've gone here, whoop, uh, the whole round with my double crochet stitches. And so you can see, I mean, you can see a bit that I used a lighter tone here for this. In the end, you don't notice it very much. Uh, and it's really worth it just to see where you're going, really, to have a nicer color there in the in the slip stitch foundation round. Okay, so I just have one stitch here left. I'm gonna work a double crochet into that. And what I do on my borders is I always finish with the invisible um, stitching in the fit in the, in the 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 invisible join in the end, and then I start somewhere else because it's such long rounds anyways, and it doesn't really matter. You can work over your tail, so that's that that way you don't have a join at one place on the border, which I. You know, I prefer to do it like this. So this was the last stitch here. So I'm just gonna pull my yarn up like so, and then 
uh, we don't even need the, the, the needle for this. I'm just going to put my hook here under. Sorry about the black color, Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna put my hook here under the first, under both loops of the first DC of the round. And I'm going to pull the yarn here from this through like so. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only, like so, of the last stitch of the round I did, and pull it through there, like so. And then you have an invisible join. Okay, and then the back uh, side is really just all like this. I'm just going to start the next round so that you see. So now you just start somewhere else. Let's just start here. And you go, you can either go into back loop or both loops. I'm going to go into both loops here just to have it tighter. Uh, and just start working wherever. I know I should do it here close to the corner so you'll see. Okay, just into both loops here. Pull my yarn up and do two chains. And then I'm going to work into both loops. I'm just going to do two, no, one double crochet into each stitch. I'm going to work over my tail here as well. Uh, until you get to the board, no, to the corner. Let's just get there, nice and easy does it. So I'm working into each and every stitch, one double crochet into each stitch. And when you get to the corner here, I did one double crochet into the last double crochet there. And then I'm gonna do two double into, into the, the chain here, um, the chain space here. So I'm gonna yarn over, and I'm gonna do into the corner chain space. I'm gonna do two double crochets. One and two, and then two chains, and another two double crochets here. Okay. And then you start here on just normally, and then here's the next double crochet after the the, the corner space. I guess you're kind of just more listening to me than seeing what I'm doing here with this black yarn. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I hope it's it's all clear. And yeah, so you can do, and now I'm just gonna do the same here the whole round. I'm just gonna do two rounds for my double border. You can do it as wide as you want. You could just do one. I'm gonna do two. So I'm just gonna continue and whoop, do the rest of it. And then you, you finish the round exactly the same with the, with the uh, invisible join. And when I get to that here, actually I'm gonna work over my tail, okay? So that was the back side. You can just do as many rounds as you do. On to the front side border and for this simple border that we're doing here it's actually just the same as the back side I'm just going to do two rounds here of double crochets and it's pretty much exactly the same as before but I'm just going to show you anyway because we are doing this beginner friendly so I'm going to start here close to a corner so and now I'm just going to work into the back loop here actually because I want this little line of this color to show to frame it up you can work into both if you want so I go into the back loop here of just any stitch, pull my yarn up and do two chains. And then there's just one double crochet into each stitch. I'm gonna work over my tail here. One double crochet, always oh, just into the back loop if you wanna leave the little frame of this nice pink color we used for our foundation round. And so now I'm getting here to the corner, so I would say that these two are with this side. So this is the the second to last here on this side. Just gonna work one double crochet there. I'm gonna drop my tail here now. And then the last here on this side, just like we did on the back side, we're gonna do two double crochets into that one. Do, 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 do. Oops, my tail is really, <laughs> okay, one and two into the last stitch of this, this side and then two chains and also two here into the first uh, stitch of the next side okay do do do, do. my yarn split swana one and two okay and then it's just one stitch, double crochet into each stitch. I'm always working into the back loop here. And as you can see, when you do that, you have this little line here that frames it up, which is quite a nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do my two 
rounds of double crochet here on the front and finish the the second round for the back and then i'll show you how to close them off together whoop almost there just the front side to go now <laughs> okay so i have finished two rounds for the back border two rounds for the front border as well and there you can see we have this little like if you go into both loops of these instead of just the back loop then it will just look like that this you can hardly see it just when you're stretching it like this so you can do that as well for the front side if you prefer i want to leave this in it'll look nice once i um block it uh, what i want to say i did this little extra hangy thing here on one corner honestly i was sitting on the couch and i could <laughs> Just get my ass off the couch to film it. Um, I mean, it's just, I just did one chain here in the corner and then I chained up as much as I needed for me to be able to put it through like this because I want to be able to hang it like this on my uh, oven. And then I uh, slip stitched into all of them and just continued. I mean, it's very easy. And you don't have to do that anyways if you don't want to. Uh, now, what we will do is trim the ends, and no, I did not find my good scissors, which is just a crying shame, but we will power through. This is not the, the worst adversity that I have faced either. <laughs> so, when you trim the ends, now this is rather, usually I'm making a border that is uh, wider than this, but it doesn't really matter, you just tuck at everything nicely and cut it so that it fits inside the border. So we're gonna cut these quite close. Usually I would leave like at least three, four centimeters. That is like, what is one centimeter? No, what is it like? One to two inches or less. But anyways, just gonna cut these with my small scissors, but And it's okay because they'll all be there inside and they're not getting pulled at or anything so okay and i have some extra ends here and i'll just cut as well just a bit of a tail there and this here from the, the foundation round right. done a double knot there so that should be okay so basically just trim all your ends and then we will close the border okay okay so the only bit left is closing the border and i'm usually gonna go up a half hook size here so it's not necessary but i just find it's easier that way and so we have all our ends here inside and we're just going to close it up and then they will be hidden here inside, okay? And this is really very, very, very easy. And again, I am so sorry for the black, but it was aesthetically necessary. <laughs> I do have another border video as well as, as um, part of my Beginner's Guide series. Uh, so you start somewhere close to a border and let's just count, what, two, four, five stitches from the border. No, from the corner, sorry. Two, four, five. Okay. And I'm just going to go into the front. Now, back loop here of the front piece. And the, the um, it's also really the back loop of the back piece, but like the one that is closest to me here in the middle. And then I'm going to pull my yarn up. And I'm just going to go again into the next one. The front loop here and the back loop here. No, the ba back loop here and the and the and the loop that is closer to me in the back, and just pull through, and through the one that I had on my loop. So it's just a, a slip stitch, round like the foundation round we did, and we're gonna do that into each and every uh, stitch. The two loops here that are in the middle. You can go under both loops. I mean, it's not a. I just like this extra little detail like this and now that we get to the corner we're just going to do the same into the chains here the first chain we do a single crochet no a, a slip stitch and i like to just do one um 
chain extra here on a corner, corner just to like emphasize the corner. I don't even think that's in the pattern. I just always do it to get more of like a crispy corner. And then into the next, these are the chains here. The second chain of the corner. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's just wonderful to do it in black for me as well. This one here. No, this one. And so it's just this same way all the way through. And you should have the same stitch count, obviously, because you're doing the same in the front and the back. But if for some reason you have one or two more stitches on either side, and you're getting like when you're getting close to a corner, you should maybe count and see if it's fitting. If it's not fitting, let us say, for example, that I have more stitches on this side here than this one here, then in the next one, just to um, even that out, I will just go into the next stitch here on this one and the same that I already did on the other side. And that way, I'm, you know, evening it out. But I don't think I will need that. But if you do, it's just, it's very easy to fudge. So just do that the whole way around and then finishing it with, a, with the invisible joint like I showed you. Okay, so I'm going to do mine and then probably I'll film just a bit in blocking. Da, 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 da. Oh, it looks, it looks nice. Mm, looking forward to the other one. <laughs> I really need uh, pot holders also in my kitchen, so this is perfect. So go forth and conquer. Uh, continue joining the border and I'll meet up with you in the blocking. Ah, la, 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 la. Okay, so it's the last step. Just blocking it lightly just to get it crisp and clean, the corners and everything. So all I did here was just lay it down and just put some pins in it just to get it the, and, you know, get the edges nice and everything. And then just have like a, a bottle of water here, like an old cleaning thing that has this. And then I just spray it a bit and let it dry for the night. And then it will be crispy, cool and nice manana and ready for photo and this is the big trick you guys for photos if you are doing you know posting your pics of your work on social media the magic is in the blocking i do not post anything without blocking it just makes everything so much better i mean you can skip it if you want to but i don't see why you should because it is lovely look at this <laughs> All done. On to the stripe border next then. Go forth and conquer, my friends. <laughs>